Perhaps you've been eagerly awaiting my next Warcraft 3 commentary. Or perhaps you've stumbled upon this video by chance. Either way, thanks for checking it out and welcome to one of the best RTS games ever created. Warcraft 3 is a real-time strategy game that features four unique species in constant combat with each other. As a player, you control one of the four species in a strategical war against opponents from all over the world. Now, the competitive environment of the Warcraft 3 multiplayer helped give birth to the phenomenon of the so-called eSports or electronic sports. What you're watching now is a replay of a game from the 2008 World Cyber Games in Cologne, Germany. And with the first place uh, price of uh, 20,000 US dollars, you can see how it helped take competitive gaming to the next level. Now, in the knockout stage of the tournament, I faced off with the talented French player Todd. Formerly we were teammates and we are friends still. And uh, as the best European players, Todd and I have had a history of encounters in various high profile tournaments. Uh, starting with a 0-1 deficit against him, losing the first map. And thus the second map would be match point. Now let's jump into the game. You can see I'm starting off with uh, a standard uh, altar of storms first which will allow me to get my hero at top speed I'm starting here at the bottom right location meanwhile uh, Tot is starting at the top right and he is using two peasants to build his altar of kings and this uh, ability to use multiple workers on uh, finishing a building faster is unique to the human race to the human species and uh, he's using that in order to get a head start on uh, creeping a camp early on and uh, it is his hope that he will finish that creep camp before my hero could even be there to try and uh, mess with him uh, there. So you see now his uh, Archmage already started and uh, mean meanwhile my Altar of Storms is not uh, nearly finished yet. Basically if we look at uh, the layout of the map there are uh, four possible starting locations here at the top left, the bottom left, the top right and the bottom right. Now, I have favorite starting locations and I have less favorite starting locations. And I have to say this was me spawning on my least favorite location. Why? The layout of this base uh, and how the forest is around my base is a little bit awkward uh, when you're trying to get a effective base layout which would be good in dealing with possible aggression from human, uh, such as tower rushes. And because you don't know from which direction he would be coming, where his main base is, it is hard to orient your base into a specific position. Um, how I'm building it right now would be good for opponents coming from the left, but uh, this is a little exposed for opponents coming from above. So. It's also, uh, it also takes me more peons to mine from the gold mine. Now I scouted with my peons, saw his hero is not building anymore, which means he uh, power built his altar checking out the most obvious location and I find him creeping there getting a good start on that rock golem meanwhile I uh, just got my hero finished up went with the farseer and farseer is uh, my hero of choice for this I practiced hundreds of games with him in order to prepare for the world cyber games and uh, I have chose to go with him because although human can creep this camp quickly it is uh, my attempt to try to kill some peasants in order to make him rue that uh, decision. Uh, it's important not to let any spirit wolves die. They give uh, 30 experience points to the opponent. Got that one away. This one sadly dies to a peasant. So that's uh, 30 additional experience points to him. He's now at nearly level 2.5. And, and I've killed one peasant thus far. Now in general, if I'm able to kill about 3 peasants and lose nothing, I'll be pretty satisfied. So far I've killed 2 peasants and I've lost a wolf. So it's not quite perfect, but it's not altogether that bad. Uh, that's something I would have loved to avoid, uh, getting that damage on the grunt. Uh, but in exchange I do get a footman kill, although he gets another wolf kill. So uh, Definitely could be better for either of us. I think uh, overall he came out of that a little bit better than me. I do have some uh, experience points purely from killing his units. And I'm over level uh, one and a half already, but he's also at over level two and a half. So in Warcraft 3 there are many different kinds of advantages. You've got the hero level advantage, you've got the item advantage, you've got uh, money advantage, uh, army advantage, lots of different kinds and uh, because it's such 
uh, deep and strategic game, you can be behind in some of them, but be ahead in others. Now, the way he chose to approach this game, uh, creeping fast and spending resources on building a faster altar, that allows him to take the lead in both the creeping, and therefore the, the items that he finds, and the hero level. So, uh, with that farce here, I'm trying to uh, set him back by killing some peasants, which will uh, delay his tech. And if you see, he just started his tech. Mine is already almost halfway, and I'm gonna try and put that to uh, to use, and uh, that will allow me to get up my tech structures uh, quickly. Notice how I'm uh, using just my wolves and my grunts to uh, creep this camp, as I go scout the most obvious location for him to creep with my farseer, and trying to uh, deny him from creeping that. And uh, keep in mind that, uh, particularly of course when the Archmage is by himself, but it's even tr it even holds true when I'm bringing my grunts and my uh, spirit wolves. You want to serve mostly a delaying function. You don't want to fight him head on, take damage, give damage, because his army is a little bit better. And uh, particularly when he brings militia, there's really not much uh, to be gotten there. But on the other hand, uh, delaying uh, will help me a lot, because uh, if we both stay low level, that's better for me. But uh, in the meantime, he used... Uh, he used his uh, footman to creep to level 3 Archmage, I'm trying some kind of fancy surround there. Had a half surround, but uh, what I did not notice was that he had 4 footmen attacking my Archmage, and I took a lot of damage there. And uh, put, used my last heal solve to put some uh, life on myself. Try and get in here and uh, doing a fancy chain lightning steal on that creep, but uh, Tilt is too wily for that. And uh, with that boots of speed and the additional damage he has from the Rope of the Magi, he can chase me down and do me a lot of damage. And I went down to 3 to 4 HP. And of course I have some armor, uh, 4 armor, but it could have been that that hit would have taken me out. My gut feeling said no though. And uh, as I took the last uh, hit and went down to 3 HP, I decided I don't want to risk that again. I'm going to Town Porter out of here. See ya. So now uh, I am I am losing a little bit of map control uh, because uh, I have low life. I'm scouting with my wolf, seeing what he's doing, and he's getting that another spirit wolf kill, which uh, gives him a lot of experience points. I wish he did not have. He's got his footman waiting there as he reaches tier two. Immediately picks up a beastmaster, and uh, what we usually see the Chinese human sky doing is to immediately go for the orc base and try and do some harassment. Uh, putting damage on grunts, delaying stuff, cancelling buildings, but uh, he saw I had a tower and he knows I'm at home so he decided to instead creep this camp here and uh, uh, if I wasn't his opponent I would say I really like that because it's a really smart thing to do. This creep camp here is one of the most, I don't know, wanted camps, one of the most obvious camps for me to do if we would be in a situation, let's say, where he's at his home, uh, I'm at my home and I'm looking for a valuable camp near my base to uh, to uh, creep out. I'll, I'll be able to take that and then go home and defend against any possible tier 2 uh, harassment from him. So, really smart that he uses his uh, momentary advantage uh, of heroes uh, with that tavern hero to uh, use his map control to creep this. Because that will force me to search my uh, luck elsewhere. I would have to go over here if you look at my cursor at the orange camp or, or this one or this one. And all of them will have me removed further away from my base than this camp would have been. And that would allow him to take a direct path from his main base straight to my base and uh, do some damage. And of course I don't have Town Portal anymore and uh, if he would be coming from my main base I would be forced to return immediately with my Torrent Chieftain. And that's exactly what's happening as he comes in here with his summons, with his heroes and footmen. And I'm uh, just trying to go and take out that priest which will... Uh, be good. Uh, he actually self-killed it so I didn't get XP, but at least it's dead. It's not uh, doing any healing anymore. And I have to watch out with it. my Archmage. Almost uh, did a shockwave, but uh, could not reach the footman anymore. And I uh, had to move that Spirit Walker back to Ethereal form and put my Faros here in defensive position. Notice, by the way, how I left a hole uh, under here, under the barracks, and uh, put my towers in a good defensive position to try and uh, deal with any kinds of uh, aggression, particularly tower rushes. And uh, this uh, build layout is a little something that I came up with uh, after some extensive tryouts in my uh, practice. And I decided, why block off with two burrows here linked uh, and, and hexing off uh, this area? 
If then I make a demolisher, which is a uh, siege unit, useful at defending my base, he would be all stuck here and uh, die an inglorious death. So, uh, leaving open this hole here. Even wrote a little strategy article about that. Uh, uh, I guess to the joy of many Orc players, uh, got a lot of uh, appreciation <laughs> feedback from that. And uh, gonna try to use that if he towers me. And uh, I did check his heroes quickly as he came uh, with aggression. Didn't see any ivory towers, so. Uh, was uh, perhaps lulled into thinking uh, there might not be a tower rush coming from him but uh, he brought in his peasants as he uh, kept me in my base and is starting to tower now and look at the excellent position he's doing his peasants and towers in the front casters in the back even though I ensnared that sorceress over there I'm unable to get to it as uh, he's got a big chunk of uh, peasant boys uh, right there in the front nice around there by me but uh, all it accomplishes is uh, forcing him to use that invulnerability potion. Well, better early than never. And uh, the next round would then be a possible kill for me on the Beastmaster. Really happy that I have those towers now. They are really the only thing that's keeping me alive. As I'm trying to get out my Demolisher. Demolisher spawning in the front. Thank you very much. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, trying to run in here. Speed scroll. I'm just now saving the Demolisher, although I think that was a little bit of a micro mistake. He could have tried to focus it down, but now I am repairing. He's uh, attacking him with Quilbys, but not quite enough. Doing Shockwave and Chain Lightning uh, on his stuff, killing a lot of stuff. Burrows and uh, Tower Shooting doing a good job, but his first two towers finished as well. And now he's doing mana damage with that Arcane Tower, taking away my chance of uh, possible new disenchant. And uh, this Demolisher has to really be careful as he escapes back in my base. Keep in mind, the Demolisher does not have uh, a good attack type against Towers. Towers have heavy armor, not siege, uh, not siege friendly. Uh, so all my Demolisher is, is a kind of slow war of attrition in uh, order to try and take down those Towers. I don't do a lot of damage, but I will try to do attack around so that uh, everything around it will be damaged too. And I can also use the Demolisher to shoot down casters as is happening right there. Boom, splash, Dead Priest. In the meantime, we traded a lot of units here. I'm uh, down to 45 food, making my second demolisher. Gotta watch out for that walker. And uh, I have to try and heal everything up. Fill up that front burrow. And uh, he uh, smartly tries to put some damage or possibly kill the demolisher, but uh, I'll have none of it and uh, send him packing. Could not quite surround him though. And uh, keep in mind, look, every time he comes close, I, he's trying to tank now with his Archmage, but I quickly switch target and kill his sorceress, the priest, and one more sorceress. So that's three kills right there for that tower. Really nice. Meanwhile, lost one uh, Spirit Walker though. Uh, but now I've got out my second Demolisher. So at this point, I'm starting to think, whew, 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 maybe, <laughs> maybe I can do it. I have to keep everything alive. And uh, I cannot stress enough how important it is that you keep the way to walk away from the front free. And that's uh, exactly what did not happen uh, well here. And, uh, he got an easy kill there on the Demolisher, and that's really bad news for me, because one Demolisher is not going to take down that many towers uh, being repaired by peasants. Now, if we take a little bit of a look at his uh, aim with this uh, particular attack, he's got, a several, uh, he's got several aims in his mind. He wants to take down as many Demolishers as he can, putting on slow on the Demolishers, which will uh, make them unable to run away. And if they attack, they will be able to do attacks with less speed therefore less damage and that will save him money and another objective he has a really big objective is to try and take down that barracks should he succeed in taking down all my demolishers in the barracks that's game over for me and uh, taking down that demolisher right there is certainly no good for me and uh, but in the meantime I did have a fairly decent trade I killed four casters right there and two more here and now you can see having those uh, having that tower here which is kind of in an obscure location and the tower that I had over there, they both helped me because uh, he chose to tower me from the left due to the pretty good position of those towers and that uh, made it so that all, of re all the reinforcements are coming from the top and uh, that gives me a chance to ensnare them, surround them and kill them off. I tried to surround there on the Beastmaster but was unable to uh, replace the grunt which died by the raider in time, his quill beast was blocking it and then now it's just one big mayhem and chaos and uh, bought a mana potion there on my Farseer who has Chain Lightning level 2. If his hero should drop to a amount of hit points which I find to be 
possible to kill, I would immediately use Mana Potion and try and kill him off. There I go, try to use Chain Lightning, but I do not get enough additional hits. Just needed one or two more hits, but uh, he got away, and uh, that makes me one sad little orc. Down to 40 supply now. Got two Demolishers, soon a third one coming, and once the third one is out, I can actually start killing peasants and taking down his towers. And add to that, that he's down to 35 food, with just a few casters, which can get focused down by my Demolishers, a lot of damage there. And that probably spells the end soon of this uh, tower rush. And I tried to kill his Archmage there, Farseer was too far away to join in the fray, and he used his Town Portal and smartly TPs out, bringing the last of the peasants with him. So a little bit of a status quo report now. He took down my beast tree. I have no raiders, which means uh, no raiders for any time soon. Took down my altar of storms, which uh, would be bad if I lose a hero now. Wouldn't be able to... Oh, actually I have one raider there. And I have three demolishers. So at this point, Tot will be thinking. Uh, three demolishers. And no, not much raiders. Grubby's out of it for a while. So what can he do? He can start... Creeping perhaps go for an expansion or perhaps go creep a lot because he can use this time that I'm busy here with the uh, taking down the towers to, uh, very effectively. So um, knowing that I send out my spirit wolves, I'm going to check his main base and see how many peasants he has mining lumber. If I see plenty of peasants there, I know that he's not expanding. And at the same time, I'm sending this wolf to his most obvious expansion location, the natural here, and to confirm that very same information. I'm uh, counting peasants. Four, seven, eight peasants. Okay, he's not expanding. And this wolf uh, here ascertains that uh, information. In fact, uh, I thought maybe then he'll be creeping this camp, but no, he isn't. He's uh, throwing his weight around, using his superior standing army. And uh, higher hero levels, he's level 4, 3, and I'm just level 3, 3. And uh, he's using that to creep the very juicy camps on basically my side of the map once again. And... Notice how important it is to choose your creep camps with care. He's uh, he's going for this camp knowing that I cannot contest it with him, even though I see it with the wolf, and I'm forced to creep a less uh, a less valuable camp. Uh, and that's gonna make it so that if you look at my base all around here, if you look at the cursor, he's taking away the camps. He took this one away. He took this one away. And soon he's gonna try and take more camps away around my base. And now he's going for the big red spot. And uh, that will force me to travel further and further away into the map to uh, try and find any creeps of worth. And that will just increase the hero level difference between us. I'm 4-3. He's nearly 5-4. Scary prospect. And he's at 44 food now, making spellbreakers. Obviously spellbreakers are going to be very useful since they're magic immune and cannot be damaged by my shockwave chain lightning combination. And uh, I've got three demolishers, and uh, like I said, they're really not very useful units to have at this point in the game. It's uh, it's really sad, rather. Uh, they're very slow, so uh, walking all across the map, I would have to wait very long time for my uh, demolishers. And also, they do not regenerate for free. They do not regenerate at all. Uh, all, all I can do is bring some peons to try and repair them if they get any damage, and that's really a hassle. That means less lumber income, that means... Uh, I'm bringing some useless peons with me, and uh, they're a big liability. So, my 50 foot army is way worse than his, and it allows him to creep all that much. And look at the items he got. He sold whatever he found from this location, got a lot of money. And he's up to 50 food now, getting his uh, invisibility upgrade. Already has dispel for my wolves, and he's bringing in his uh, peasants uh, one more time in militia form. And now with the breakers, he's catching me. Nice scout there with the peasant. I have town portal, but do not want to use it. Buy a zeppelin instead and make my getaway. And uh, even though I get away and I go to my base with uh, base defenses, he knows he can do quite a lot. He's sticking around, keeping me uh, pent up inside my base. And here I see the militia coming in. Going to try to put some damage on them with the chain lightning. Have to uh, replenish my mana. We really have very little mana left on the farce here, and in here he comes, and I can guarantee you, this is not a fight I can win, so what is the only chance I have to try and buy some time? Gotta try and surround that Archmage, so I do a nice surround there, and uh, he does invisibility. I do a quick disenchant and uh, reveal him once again, keep disenchanting to try and reveal him, 
but he gave Potion of Invulnerability to Archmage. And in the meantime, back in my base, I'm losing Demolishers to Summons. I'm shooting down that Sorceress and uh, gonna maybe lose that Spirit Walker, maybe lose another. Very difficult situation for me and I can't win this fight. My hero levels are too low, I have no mana left. So my last recourse is really to take, try and take down that Archmage. Keep disenchanting to prevent invisibility. And there he goes. Lose one more Raider. Heavy losses by me, but uh, mission accomplished. I'm able to uh, have him force a TP. And uh, try to remake my Raider there. Good thing is that now I have a 50 supply, uh, 50 food army. Minus one Demolisher, so it's a bit more useful army. And uh, coming upon some money. I ch try uh, to remake my Altar of Storms now, thinking, what if I had lost my hero in that fight? That would be pretty GG, and uh, this Altar of Storms will allow me to, of course, remake my hero in another method than from buying from the Tavern. It's uh, like twice as expensive there, and you don't get full mana and hit points. So, Warcraft 3 is also a game of, of resourcefulness. I, I use that Zeppelin to make my emergency getaway, but how am I going to use it now? So I decide to provide my demolishers with some much needed mobility. I can uh, bring them with my army much faster that way. And also I'll be able to do some uh, emergency escapes with my army or with my uh, demolishers. And possibly there's also some moves whereby you bring your demolishers and you shoot a hole in the forest, drop them there and then shoot with impunity to the enemy base. And let's see if I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to do that right now. So if we're talking about game plan and chances to win, I'm behind in both army, in items, and in hero levels. So really the only thing I can do is use that pillage that I upgraded a couple of minutes ago and try to get some money back from uh, killing his buildings. Pillage is upgraded, uh, allows me to gain money attacking his buildings and possibly doing some economical damage. And just as he was here killing my burrow, I come in and I kill a couple of peasants, just two peasants, Felt like I could have gotten a little bit more out of it, but uh, I have to tell you, that was a buttock clenching moment for me, and I do not uh, blame myself that much. In the meantime, my wolves are scouting this out, doing a very useful job, possibly the most useful job they're doing yet. If he had got that expansion up, the pressure would be tremendous on me and try to try and keep up with him, especially now that uh, my gold mine just collapsed. But uh, those two peasants get taken out. Trying to do some more damage here with the demolishers. And uh, don't think I kill another peasant with it, but I do now know that he's in his main base, which will allow me to roam free on the map. Got my speed scroll, got my town portal, and perhaps I can try and get some creeps or force a cancel on this. Now I'm using demolisher, uh, really putting uh, the Zeppelin to pretty nice use, using demolisher to try and take down the town hall as I am putting up a great hall of my own. And Looky here, he has a farm to try and uh, see if uh, perhaps I'm expanding, but uh, the vision does not extend far enough to see it, so he would not see it until my peons come walking in. And I strongly believe he did not actually cancel this town hall, he actually lost it. Uh, except maybe he cancelled it and bought a Hiosko instead, but yeah, he has no money left. That means uh, no expansion for him, he's uh, running on his last money. I'm trying to do uh, some damage on his main. Given the fact that he cannot gain any money anymore through uh, mining, every damage I do on his base is damage that he can never truly uh, fully repair anymore. So that's very good for me. I'm gaining money at the same time with pillage. And uh, my expansion is nearly done. I have speed scroll, so if he comes, I will make a quick getaway. And there I see him come in. I see he has bloodlust which he got through the Spellbreaker, so I know he just crept this, making a mental note in my head that uh, this camp is not creepable anymore, even though on my minimap it still shows up as uh, uncrept. But uh, those are just uh, little things that you learn as you get more experienced. I'm running across the map, perhaps gonna creep some while I do harassment here with the Demolishers. I'm trying to buy some time for my expansion. And, uh, tot, uh, knows about my expansion now he sees the peons going back and forth so he's gonna try and do some summon harassment first of all in my main soon we'll be making some and sending to sending them to my expansion there go the first clue beast and water elemental and here i am uh, gonna try and take down his buildings oh but i gotta be careful he used an invisible sorceress to slow those walkers extremely nice move very advanced 
He found those uh, walkers and uh, slowed them, now doing double damage in ethereal form and taking down that walker. In the meantime, I'm speed scrolling away with the rest, sending my zeppelin up uh, with the demolishers and also did an emergency evac on that walker. So nice unit kill there for him. That's uh, really how he's going to try to have to try to win this game. Sending a lot of summons here for uh, peon harassment. And if he can kill them and suppress the damage on uh, on those peons. I mean, uh, suppress the income from those peons. And at the me in the meantime, sometimes do cute little moves like that where he kills a unit. Then he's going to be able to stay in this game or possibly maintain his lead. Because honestly, I can't take direct fights now. And he knows about my expansion. He's, he's killing a lot there. But uh, there I came to defend. So since he knows that my army is uh, on my side of the map, he's got to force an offensive move. If he sits back, I'm going to get more and more money. And uh, at the same time, he can't go for my base with his whole army if he knows I'm near his base. So he's got to keep tabs. And uh, this invisible water elemental sees me going up. So he's going to try to use that invisible sork to do some pesky slow on my stuff. Killed his tower and farm there with my uh, wolf harassment speed scroll my stuff away now I'm at 56 supply I'm choosing to go over 50 supply over 50 food because I feel like it could be coming to a fight pretty soon getting a burrow there to do some uh, defense and as well as uh, protection not sure why my demolisher is flying this particular direction if I wanted it to die I might as well have killed it, himse killed it myself and uh, save myself from giving him all that experience double ouch move here nice. yeah, is, is he gonna kill it? yeah he's gonna kill it so uh, I have to run away playing a game of cat and mouse here did get level 5 on my uh, farce here already able to send those shadow wolves for some harassment and he killed almost all my peons here yeah he killed all my peons and uh, killing the burrow now so I don't have any more income and that puts me under in immense pressure because no income means uh, it means how can I how can I win this game I cannot win direct fight luckily here I find a lot of peasants killing them and uh, I don't have any more speed scrolls so I have to TP away he will net himself one more walker kill right there as I TP away and, uh, killing a lot of peons there so level 5-5 five, five, uh, now and he's level 5-5 five, five. he's inching closer and closer to level 6 and if he gets mass teleport, this will just put him in a really good position to try and deal with my uh, hit and run tactics. I don't have a lot of uh, items on my heroes. He's uh, moving in here cautiously though. He's checking first with summons. Doesn't want to get caught out of position by an army that would be potentially dangerous to him. And uh, He sees my army and decides... Does he decide to move in or is he going to do some more harassment? On my expansion can never truly forget about the expansion if he wastes too much time fighting with me and forgets about the X I'm gonna run ahead uh, economically in the meantime uh, I've got some peons stationed at different gold mines uh, I may not be able to rely purely only on this expansion may have to expand sometime in the future somewhere else if I have enough money there he's uh, chasing me I'm speed scrolling away what does he do keeps following me and sending more summon harassment this walker did his job did some summon dispels but uh, he felt pretty lonely so he rejoining he's rejoining with my army I'm trying to ensnare his uh, spirit bear and running away using my wolves to buy a little bit of time and there with the slow and focus down he's killing another walker and uh, also taking down more peons so a little bit of a ninja expand for me here and the uh, most well, in the least likely location for him, since that's supposedly, you know, his natural expansion. And now I'm trying to uh, gain some hero level, killing that bear. Perhaps shouldn't have, has a lot of HP, using a little bit of an unelegant method to uh, take down that bear. And at this point, I was forced, due to his quick advancement into my territory, I was forced to split up my walkers to try and save them away from my raiders. And this puts me in a tough situation, because... Now I cannot dispel slow, and that seems okay, but he just got one more slow long distance, and now he's using that blink on the bear, and he's bashing my TC, and I would just wish that my walkers were with my army, but I could not safely rejoin them. 
And I, I do not have any speed scroll, I do not have town portal, and I cannot afford to lose this hero. I need to get it away. And uh, oh no, one more blink with the bear, and then the final hit with the Archmage, and he takes it down, which is absolutely horrid for me. I have no money, he killed all my peons, I have an order of storms, but no money to reproduce it. So at this point, my heart is beating like an beating like an African drums. I'm going crazy with adrenaline, and I'm realizing this is match point, and I am losing this game. I lost the hero I could not afford to lose. He's roaming now with a level six archmage, getting a lot of experience from that kill, and now he has mass teleport, which will make my harassment so much more ineffectual. And this is how losing games look like, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when it rains, it pours. Not only did I lose TC, he's getting additional surround there on my walker and uh, getting level 6 Beastmaster. Now he's mass teleporting to my desperate attempt at uh, taking down his base, casting a lot of slow, killing my raiders there, slowing them. And uh, I'm just trying to buy a TP. Had to actually sell an item worth just 33 gold. And uh, I don't even get that much back for it. Get like 17 gold to try and buy TP. And I am mining just with four peons here, choosing not to remake a fifth peon because who knows, they could be dying anytime soon to summon harassment. My only saving grace, in fact, in this game is that I have this base. Not with fully running my mine yet, but at least he doesn't know about it, and that's something. So, even though my position is super, super bad. I'm gaining a little bit of hope and uh, trying to put some damage here on his keep. And you can see how he mass teleports back just for two wolves. That he feels confident that the game is going pretty well for him. I mean, he killed my heroes. He's uh, constantly denying mining here, killing peons, getting additional experience points. And he's got a nice standing army, 41 food. He made one peasant uh, with which perhaps soon he will try to do some emergency repairs. There we go. And he's fully under the impression that this game is going not bad for him. He's taking away most of my mining, again killed the majority of my peels. And I have a small army. And if he had checked out my Altar of Storms, he would see that I'm not remaking my Torrent Chieftain. And that means he has information now about how much money I have. And that's a very good thing to know, because if he knows I don't have money, he can accurately judge uh, the state of the game uh, at this point. Now sending again some summons to my expansion. Secret expansion is very secret. Mining now with four peels. Needs just one more to be fully saturated. And I keep trying to do some ninja attacks here with my wolves on his uh, main base. And that's really my only chance uh, to win it seems to go for elimination. Again very smart move there doing an invisible sorceress sending him out on a major traffic route. As he tries to leave his base and he saw my raiders there did a double slow and uh, I know he can catch up with me uh, either with more hidden and invisible sorceresses or with that spirit bear who can blink and bash and stun me for short durations of time so choose to use my town portal at this point I do have enough money to uh, remake my torrent chieftain he's sending an elemental and sees that now and uh, the fact that he sees my torrent chieftain being remade causes him to react immediately he has to try and take down that altar of storms in order to uh, make sure I stay on a one hero situation. And that's truly terrible for me as you can see it's only halfway done. And that would force me to either not have the TC or remake it from the tavern in the middle. Which costs twice as much almost and also costs a lot of lumber and also it doesn't have full HP and mana when it comes out. So a nice kill by him there. He uh, sends some summons away just in time and teleports home to uh, avoid Dying to my uh, harassment with raiders. I picked up some money with the raider harass, just two raiders, and uh, then I ran away. Didn't even have a speed scroll, and there he picks up one more unit. So let's talk a little bit about what Todd knows now, and how he's acting out his objectives in this game. He is leaving some casters at home, which is more than enough to deal with uh, Shadow Wolf harassment. He can uh, cast slow on them to reduce damage, and he can dispel them if he's uh, a little bit more alert than he is now and it will reduce the brunt of the harassment from those wolves if i harass with my army he can mass teleport home cast slow on my units and then basically for free he could kill one or two units as i run away 
and he knows about this expansion, keeps killing peons, and he knows I cannot be getting a lot of money from that, so uh, the situation for him looks good. And he's acting on the situation. He's, uh, he's containing me, he's uh, killing peons, and trying to get some hero uh, uh, surround possibly, or killing more units, but now I think for the first time Todd would be able to know something is wrong. I should not be able to have my TC back. Perhaps there is a hidden expansion. I'm not sure if he knew. Uh, it's a very tense situation and it's difficult to accurately judge the economic situation of your opponent. But uh, possibly he would know. And uh, in any event, he doesn't have time to think about it. I have to go for a quick surround there on his Archmage. He is able to mass teleport out and kill this expansion in the process. So uh, still not too bad for him. He can soon mass teleport home and uh, rejoin with his casters and uh, do a little bit of creeping here. And th now he might be thinking that we are in a situation where it's a, a no base versus no base situation. Neither of us mining. And that will lead usually to a situation whereby there will be a lot of small skirmishes. And those summons are going to be absolutely invaluable in that situation. But uh, what I know is I'm having this expansion, so I'm in fact more comfortable than, uh, than it really seems. Uh, all this game long I've been trying to defend and hit and run so hard to uh, distract him from uh, even coming up with the thought perhaps that there is an expansion somewhere else. It's uh, really one of my trademark moves to have uh, secret expansions. But it's, uh, it's a, a little bit of an art to try and uh, keep your opponent in the dark about it. You have to try and represent... Uh, just having one mining base or, or half one and here I get a nice little opportunity to take down a caster I have to take that one down a couple of more casters there and uh, try to shockwave chain lightning them down taking them instantly and uh, all I lose in return is uh, that one walker taking down a barrel level 6 farce here and uh, I smell blood to try to take down that beastmaster he gives the TP quickly and smartly and the TP's out nearly losing my archmage was forced to use speed scroll and heal scroll and I run in Perhaps possible to uh, take down that Beastmaster and potentially finish the game. Uh, one more Shockwave might be able to do it, but uh, Spirit Link goes to his Beastmaster, stolen from my Spirit Walkers, and uh, he's able to uh, escape with his life. In the meantime, I'm setting up another expansion here on the left, and I'm finally thinking that I have a pretty good chance in this game. I have a lot of Raiders and Walkers. I, I have enough money to buy the also necessary clarity and uh, and, and heal, healing solves. And uh, now, if we look from Todd's position, he uses last money to buy invulnerability potion, which is a really good decision. You can try and and think like, oh, you know, I lost this game, or you can try to go for that small chance, that slim chance that you still have. And for him, I can guarantee you, it's trying to get a surround on my hero. But uh, I'm afraid that. At this point, my army is just too big already. I have too many disenchants, uh, taking out his summons, uh, and snaring all his uh, spell breakers. And I have that shockwave chain lightning. And uh, the next surround will most likely be fatal on his archmage, as I turn this nearly lost, nearly doubly lost game into a surprise victory. And uh, Tot is forced to tap out and call GG. And I breathe a sigh of relief as I uh, conquer this game uh, for myself. Whew. So, thanks for uh, watching this, guys uh, and girls. I hope you enjoyed it. This was uh, Grubby with episode 9 of uh, Grubby's Warcraft 3 commentaries. A little bit of history on the rest of the series. This was, uh, yeah, this was the quarterfinals of the World Cyber Games 2008. The first game went to Tot in a pretty rapid fashion. I also elected to go with the Farseer on Turtle Rock. And he surrounded it quickly, forced the TP, and then he killed it, and then he tower rushed me with uh, Archmage Mountain King. And uh, that's the correct thing to do when you have such a big advantage, and he finished the game. And then after I inched out this game too, we went to a game three to Nolwood. And uh, Nolwood is, uh, I would say, relatively orc favored, and uh, it was put to good use as we met on the middle of the map at the fountain with the fountain... Uh, in my back, so I was able to make use of it uh, using Blade Master and uh, my units to uh, get healing at the same time and taking down his stuff. And as uh, mercilessly in favor 
game one and three were in one of our, our favor. So close was the second game, and uh, well, it uh, allowed me to stay alive in the tournament and move on to the next round. So great game there between us. Uh, I, I hope you liked it. Uh, you can find the previous eight episodes at youtube.com slash steel series. Thanks for watching and goodbye.